And it should at least show a signal. You have to stop showing it. I'm going to get a signal in here, guys. What we're going to do. I'm Dan Greer, pastor over Community Baptist Church in the Woodlands. What's happening now? Display. Let's fix it again.
All right. Uh, again, thanks. I'm, uh, uh, again, I'm, I'm Dan Greer from there in the Woodlands. Uh, I've um, been hanging around Great School of Theology for about 11 years now, since uh, 2009, however that lined up to be. So, um, and uh, this is an area that a lot of uh, Baptist churches struggle with, uh, uh, the area of uh, uh, personal, how that uh, uh, perseverance of the saints uh, figures in uh, to um, uh, uh, work, work says doctrine. So let's pray, and uh, we'll uh, jump into some of this stuff. And then at the end, what we'll do is we'll go through some passages that uh, have uh, perseverance in them, and uh, we'll um, uh, talk about how to clarify that. The, the grace-oriented salvation clarifies the doctrine of perseverance of the saints. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your goodness and for the conference and for bringing people together like Fred and and, and, um, uh, and Dave and, 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 um, uh, and others together uh, to continue to clarify <laughs> Uh, a grace-oriented message. Uh, Lord, that's what the world needs, the gospel message, uh, to be able to discover Christ and then to have the assurance of their salvation. So be with us as we go through this today. I pray. Amen. In 1833, a, a guy by the name of Reverend John Newton Brown of New Hampshire drew up a doctrinal statement that became known as the New Hampshire Baptist Confession. Uh, the, this confession became widely accepted among Baptist churches at that time because they, they considered it in harmony with, but a milder form of the doctrine of confessions that were being held by most Baptist churches at that time, the Calvinistic Baptist beliefs that existed at that time. Uh, the, this confession was later adopted as the Articles of Faith for the seminary that is now known as the Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary uh, at, here at Fort Worth. Article 9, or, or I mean Article 11 of the uh, Confession is titled of the, um, of the uh, Perseverance of the Saints. I want to read it. In fact, I'm going to put it up on the screen here and uh, uh, let, let you see it as I read it. Uh, this out states, we believe that such only are real believers as endure until the end, that their preserving attachment to Christ is the grand mark which distinguishes them from superficial professors that a special providence watches over their welfare and that they are kept by the power of God through faith of the salvation. Now, um, a lot of a lot of Baptists have just grabbed the New Hampshire Confession and adopted it with that particular um, statement there. Now, Reverend Brown cites 21 scriptural references to uh, to uh, support his doctrine position on POTS, P-O-T-S, uh, perseverance. Uh, uh, the uh, First verse of the saints. However, not one of these 21 references contain the word hupomeno, uh, assurance. Not one of them, uh, meaning to endure or preserve. His references do not support the doctrine position. When you go through each one of the references and look at them, they do not support it. Now, one of the one of the tenets of the of Reformed theology or Calvinism. Um, is the perseverance of the saints, which is part of their famously known doctrine of tulip. And so uh, you guys know this. Uh, uh, in case you, you don't have each one of them down, I'll uh, pull up here for you. Uh, the T is total depravity. The saints, unconditional election. Limit atonement. Irresistible grace. And of course, pots. Now, the word hypomeno or hypomone, meaning to persevere or endure, can actually be found 26 times in Scripture. Uh, the uh, New Testament word for endurance, uh, hypomene, is 16 times. 
and I believe it is uh, 10 times. So let me give you a couple of examples just as we um, as we kind of go through this. We'll we'll get to these in a little bit. I'm not going to go through them and, and exegete them right now, but just to give you an example. And you'll be hated uh, of all by all men, by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. That's in Matthew 10, 22. Here's another one. Um, James, and you'll be hated by all men for my name's sake, but he who, well, indeed, we count them a blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and have seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. And we'll get to those in just a little bit, but those are a couple of examples that we threw out there. So I want to do something as we kind of dig in to, to all of this. Uh, I, I want us to just uh, look at three things, just kind of organize it and look at three things. We'll look at the scriptures and uh, as we go through that. But I want us to look at some definitions that have come out over in recent years about perseverance. Then I want to, you're going to love this word, okay? I want us to look at some determination, some predetermination, okay? <laughs> like that. Uh, and then we're going to do some demonstrations. We'll go to the scripture and do some demonstrations. So uh, I want to put these out there uh, and uh, talk about these three things as we kind of go through all of this. Um, so uh, let me, uh, again, throw a couple of scriptures out there just uh, so that we can see them. Um, and then we count them blessed who endure. You've heard of the, the, of the perseverance of Job. And it seems to the end uh, intended by the Lord that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. <coughs> um, let's, let's, let's start with the Greek definitions. Hypomeno. Uh, now this is uh, the Greek. Well, that's just going to go ahead and keep on going. Stop, stop, stop. <coughs> I think I had my thumb on. <laughs> I think I had my thumb on the wrong thing, so let me go up. I usually have a team that does this. I just talk, they just punch. <laughs> I'm not doing the punching this time, so I'm a little bit nervous over it, okay? Uh, here, here we, here, this is the, uh, the Greek English Dictionary of the New Testament, uh, and this would be endure, hypomeno, a derivative of, uh, of hypomene to, uh, to continue to bear up despite difficulty and suffering, to endure, to bear up, to demonstrate endurance, to put up with. So obviously it sounds like a lot of effort, energy, and work, okay? Uh, let's go to the other word, uh, perseverance. Uh, same, same Greek new, uh, dictionary. The capacity to continue to bear up under difficult circumstances, endure, being able to endure. So there's our, a couple of the, um, uh, the definitions from our Bible study tools. But here's a, an online Bible study tool uh, that is used quite a bit uh, by someone by the name of Gene uh, Wilmot. Um, this person has no Greek credentials at all. Uh, but here is this definition. The doctrine of perseverance of the saints affirms that God protects and preserves Christians, his saints, holy ones, for eternity and causes their faith to persevere to the end when he calls them home. Now, that's her definition. She goes on to write that when opposition to this doctrine begin to form, the respected theologian Augustine responded around 428, 429. He, he wrote in his, his treatise of the gift of uh, perseverance that perseverance isn't a work of man. Now this, this is our, our theologian here. But a gift given by God to his children to empower them to persevere in faithfulness to Christ to the end of their life. Now that's that's that definition. Let's go to another definition as we look at these. Uh, this is an online dictionary. Um, a Christian doctrine 
One of the five points of Calvinism stating that true believers in Jesus Christ's substitutionary atonement on the cross, the saints, cannot relapse and are predestined to salvation. And that's just one of the online dictionaries. Let's go to um, Ronald Kamenica uh, of the Protestant Reformed Churches in America. He says the name used in the original five points of Calvinism, the, the Canons of Dort, and the uh, Perseverance of the Saints, this name, as we shall see, emphasizes the responsibility of every believer to continue to persevere in faith and holiness. Now, we're, we're going to get really identify works, holy works in. So let's go to. Um, Ah, here, Dr. Grudem, who we heard about. Uh, Dr. Grudem uh, writes on page uh, 788 of his um, systematic theology book, all those who are truly born again will be kept by God's power and will persevere as Christians until the end of their lives. Mm -hmm. And only those who persevere until the end have been truly born again. So this is Dr. Rudum, in case you haven't read that book. By the way, that uh, that theology book is probably the uh, number one selling systematic theology book out there. I think 450,000 copies of it uh, is in circulation. Yeah. Yeah. I have a beef with Dr. Rudum because I've discipled several, um, won several men to the Lord, disciple them, and, and, and then he ends up taking them in the wrong direction. Okay, now this is Dr. Ryrie. Dr. Ryrie is well revered by many of us, and uh, we all, um, I, I bet you guys know him much better than I. But in his basic systematic, uh, theology, his basic theology book, uh, he begins to go through what he's trying to do here. He's trying to uh, define the doctrine of eternal security. And so he kind of goes through uh, several things here. So the first thing is on eternal security, he says, Eternal security is a work of God that guarantees that the gift of salvation once received is forever and cannot be lost. The concept of eternal security emphasizes God's activity in guaranteeing the eternal possession of the gift of eternal life. So then he goes on and he talks about preservation. Preservation uh, he's uh, is uh, quite similar to eternal security and emphasize the work of God in pre uh, preserving um, the um, um, uh, uh, salvation. But uh, it says it's so we don't have any beef with that. But then what happens uh, in the same um, page there, he goes to perseverance and he says perseverance the term generally used in Calvinism labels the fifth point of Calvinist uh, theology the final perseverance of the saints. It means that believers can neither totally nor finally fall away from the state of grace, but shall certainly persevere therein to the end and be eternally saved, Westminster Confession. It seems to focus on the believer. It is the believer's is a believer who per, uh, perseveres, albeit though the decree of our God. Security focuses on God. It is God who secures our salvation. It does not deny that there uh, may be times of backsliding. I really struggle as he begins to move, as Dr. Dr. Ryrie uh, uses that. What, what he's trying to do, he's teaching on eternal security. And then he goes on to say this. Though eternal security, perseverance, I mean, uh, preservation and perseverance in reality, all teach the same bottom line, namely that the true believer will not lose his salvation. See what he's going after here. Assurance is a different thing. It is the realization of the truth of eternal security or perseverance. A secure salvation is a true fact whether one re, uh, realizes it or not. This 
Uh, thus, a believer has security whether he, uh, whether or not he has assurance. Now, I have to disagree at this point with our revered Dr. Ryrie. Uh, um, I don't think that perseverance is, is teaching eternal security at all. In fact, I think it, it, it does quite the opposite. Dr. Ryrie is trying to emphasize the doctrine of eternal security and um, preservation of the saints, not really, and then and trying to draw perseverance in the saints. So, so you really have to do a lot of theological gymnastics, and I did some, and I came up with something um, as I tried to do the same thing because uh, a lot of the circles that I've been involved in has this same article uh, in their doctrinal statement, the perseverance of the saints, persevering until the end of their life. <coughs> and I thought, Eureka, I've got it. God perseveres with the saints in an effort to preserve them. So, yeah. isn't that crazy? But <laughs> well, that's the best you can get out of it, you know. So, so, um, so these are the definitions that um, that that we're seeing out there, and they're a, a lot more mostly on the reform side. As you can see, all of these have a reform flavor to them. So I think what we have to do as we approach the doctrine of perseverance is we have to come in with a predetermination. We have to make a determination ourselves. I'm not talking about the determinant will of God. You get me here, okay? I'm talking about we've got to make some uh, determinations. And I think that determination comes from the passage of Scripture that you all already know. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and that's not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So we've, we've got to determine some things here. We've, uh, we've got to determine, are we uh, going to lean on the side of a works-oriented soteriology, or are we going to lean on the side of a grace-oriented uh, uh, so, curiality. So, we've got to go in because when you have a predetermination, I mean, if I'm works re uh, oriented, then everything that I'm going to do towards salvation is going to try to be leaning in the direction of a works oriented uh, salvation of some sort, whether we whether it's partial or or uh, or full. So, a works oriented soteriology holds that we must somehow do works in order to get saved, stay saved, or show that we're saved, prove that we're saved, okay? That's a, that's a works-oriented uh, soteriology. So those who hold this view will see endurance and perseverance uh, uh, as salvific passages, and they will use passages like the following to you know, grab it out of context, and use these kinds of passages to support them. You'll be hated by all men for my sake, but he endures to the end will be saved. That's one of the passages they'll use, holding it out of context to support. Another one will be the one that we had in James that we, we, we mentioned a moment ago. If I'm works oriented, I'm gonna go grab those passages, I'm gonna throw them up to you and say, see, yes. Haven't you found that for most people that hold a reform position, they're never going to say that you're saved by works or kept by works. They're going to redefine faith as Absolutely. faith and enduring. Yeah, and they're, they're going to say you're saved by works. There's no way. Yeah, and they're going to and they're going to try to make the faith God's gift yeah. instead of salvation, right. which is a which is a grammatical error on uh, on Ephesians two. You guys realize that 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 that's not that faith is not the gift. Uh, salvation yeah. is a gift, okay, and and so that's that's one of the arguments, absolutely. But but when you, when you get down to looking at it, what uh, what what most are saying now is that if you don't show it, you're you know uh, if it uh, if you don't show it, you're not it, you know. Uh, and and so and so that's where most of them are going to fall is um, is, is see there to prove that we're saved. But a grace oriented a grace-oriented soteriology holds that endurance, perseverance falls under sanctification and results in rewards. What does it profit a man? My brother, if someone says he has faith but does not have works, can faith save him? Now, that's one, of course, that you're 
that your works oriented would, would use. And of course, when you're looking at that passage of scripture, uh, you've got to go back to the context, 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 context. You can do anything if you take it out of context. So let's go back to the context of this passage of scripture. And in the context of James 1, he's talking about um, uh, uh, enduring uh, temptation, going through trials, respecting the poor uh, at church, feeding and clothing the destitute. All these things are to be re uh, are works for rewards. And so that's the context. And so, um, uh, so then when you come down to this, um, uh, it's a sanctification oriented passage of scripture. What does it profit a man if he says he has faith but does not work? Can faith save him? So the question would be save him from what? And the answer would be save him from the loss of rewards, save him from a empty life. It's premature not save death. him. See, premature death. A, a premature death. It's not save him from going to hell. Yes. I always like love to quote James one. Consider it all joy when you come to various trials, because these trials are able to perfect your faith. Yes. So James is talking about mature faith, perfect faith, not justification faith. And of course, he quotes Abraham, believe God, pray for the righteousness, when his faith was perfected when he offered up Isaac as a sacrifice. Right. So that's the right there. It gives you the context of what James is about. Yes. It's, James is from Missouri. <laughs> show me, show me your faith. <laughs> He was justified before men, not before God. Right. Abraham was already justified before yes. he offered Isaac. Right. That right. justified him before men. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, here's another one. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, but when he has been approved, he received a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Obviously, rewards. Same, same conduct, same passage there. So, um, so again, um, the obvious answer to uh, to this is, uh, um, you know, saving us from all of what we've uh, been talking about, especially. Uh, from the loss of reward. So as we approach the subject of salvation, soteriology, we've got to make a determination. We go into this, when we go into uh, to talk about salvation, are we going to be grace-oriented or are we going to be works-oriented? Are we going to try to bring works into uh, uh, to salvation or are we going to keep it clearly defined from it? So, um, so a grace-oriented soteriology clarifies the doctrine of endurance and perseverance, whereas the former confuses it. We begin to bring works in in any manner that it begins to confuse, and as Dr. Shea was saying a little bit ago, also begins to cause us to lack assurance in our salvation. So um, we, we've got to conclude that the context of endurance and perseverance is always sanctification. It's always building as sanctification. So I think that it'd be good for us to just go through and demonstrate this with passage of scripture. Start looking at passage of scripture because uh, a lot of scripture will be thrown at us out of context as we kind of go through it. So that's why I gave you the notes here. So we kind of go through that and uh, chime in. Um, let me see here. So let, let's take uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. If we endure, we should also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. But if we are faithfulness, and that's apisteo, that means no faith, he remains faithful, he cannot deny himself. So here he, he, he's saying, um, if I'll say, if we endure, of course, a reward to reign with him. Uh, if we deny him, he will deny us. What will he deny us? Reward. To reign with him. Why? But it's not. But but he's not denying us salvation. He's denying us um, to reign with him. 
because he remains faithful. A faithful father, he cannot deny himself. So he can't go back and say, well, now that you've denied me, I'm going to have to erase your salvation. And, you know, you were saved, now you're not saved. He, he can't deny himself. And so uh, so that's a, that's a assurance of salvation there, even if we deny him. Um, First Corinthians. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. But if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, yet so as by fire. That's a, that's a that's a given. It's a, it's rewards right there. Loss and rewards by not enduring. Um, here's one that we get thrown out a lot. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And that's in Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13. You remember what the context of that passage is? Tribulation. Absolutely. So, uh, so you know, um, the, the apostles have asked three questions. Uh, what will uh, one of these things be? What things? The destruction of the temple. Uh, what will be the sign of the coming of the end of the age? And so he's saying, basically, um, if you go back and look at him answer the question, he says, well, the and the, these things will be during this generation, your generation, going to happen. 70 AD, it happened. Okay. And then he comes back and, and says, but basically the tribulation period will, will, will mark my second coming in the, in the, uh, in the age. And so then he, then he comes in and says, he who endures to the end shall be saved. So who's he talking to? He's talking to Jewish believers are Jewish people that are getting saved during the tribulation period. If they make it to the end of the tribulation without getting their heads cut off, and um, uh, and then as a nation uh, they convert to Christ and his second coming, then he is he's coming to save them. Does that make sense? Well, in 70 AD, the Christians got out of Jerusalem and they went to Tela, and they did survive. Yes. So, uh, uh, yeah. The context of this, though, is... The end of the age, so, so we, the age ended, the Jewish age is over. Understanding that too, it's so like Dr. Cheney said, talking about where free grace clarifies uh, dispensationalism and, and a, a, a systematic theology to where you place things in the right. If you, play, if you place that wrong, you place it like in this, this time period, right like, now, it, it is confusing. It is. Now, this one will be more confusing because this right here, uh, Matthew 10, 22, is when he sends out the 12 disciples to the children of Israel only and says he who endures to the end shall be saved. So we have to go through some possibilities here. Is he talking about um, is he talking about salvation? I don't think so. Uh, if he's uh, so what are, what are some of the possibilities if they survive that evangelistic tour? Without, I mean, if you if you go back through there, they are. Um, uh, he says they're going to deny you. They're going. To, all these things will be happening as you're going to the tour. If you survive the tour, you'll be saved. Not salvation saved, but you're going to make it. All twelve of them made it, even Judas. Okay, at that period. Now that's one possibility. Another possibility is um, that if. If they survive the post crucifixion resurrection evangelistic commission, they would be safe from martyrdom. Now that's a stretch. All of them didn't survive except for John. John, John made it. Um, he, he wasn't martyred. I think that's a stretch on that one. Another one is that um, it, this could have prophetic implications for the tribulation period. Uh, a, a, a foreshadowing of the tribulation period going back and reflecting Matthew uh, 20, uh, 24 13. Those are possibilities there. He's not saying <coughs> if you quit the evangelistic campaign, you're not going to be saved. He's not saying that. And, and so that's a more difficult passage. Any, any clearer thought to that one? Okay. Um, but he also said that you won't finish 
going through the tribes of Israel until you see the man, some man coming in its glory. I'm paraphrasing, but so that's the view that you know, the tribulation is already passed. Right. He's still coming in the future, but he came in the clouds in judgment, which is a metaphor used in the Old Testament, too, for God's judgment. So that doesn't really make sense there. Um, here's here's this one. Uh, of course, this is the um, uh, the sowing of the word. But he who receives the seed on stony places, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. He has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. But when tribulation and persecution arises, because the word immediately he stumbles. Now, um, your reform people will say that this guy wasn't saved. Uh, because he didn't endure. But um, I would say that he was saved because I've just had so many people in my ministry that endured for just a while. I know they're saved, you know. Uh, but um, but he, he stumbles. And why? Because of tribulation and persecution. In fact, when you go through, uh, what, as you go through these, all of them, received the word even the one that was was on stony places he received the word but then it was taken away from him so maybe all of them were saved you know maybe one of them wasn't maybe all of them were okay the one on the roadway though he received he received the word so that's questionable whether he I, some say he does some say what so i I think Luke says he received the word. The others say it was snatched away, but I think Luke says he actually, I think one of the Gospels says that he received the word. <laughs> but who knows? <laughs> okay. Indeed, if we count them blessed who endure, you've heard of the perseverance of Job and seen to the, uh, the end indeed by the Lord, but the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. Now, the, the illustration here, so we, you know, we count them blessed who endure. And then the illustration is Job. So if you follow this logic here on the perseverance of the saint, you would have to say, had Job finally just at the end said, I can't take it anymore and given up, then he would have lost his salvation, according to um, the logic of, of, of um, salvation, mm -hmm. person, uh, uh, perseverance. Yeah. But, as, but because he persevered, what happened? Rewarded, uh, double what he had, more children reward. So that is a is a good example. Second Peter, but also for this very reason, given all diligence to add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, and knowledge self control, self control perseverance, perseverance godliness, godliness brotherly kindness, brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours to abound, you will be neither unfruitful. And the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, for he who lacks these things is short sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sin. Mm -hmm. So, see what's uh, so there's a lack of assurance when, uh, when, when we're when we struggle with perseverance, but it's obviously a, um, a, a building of our maturity and sanctification. Because you've kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial, which will come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. I'm of the belief that not only is the Lord talking to the seven churches, seven literal churches there, but it's probably talking to a reflecting seven church eras. And if that's the case, this would be the church at Philadelphia, which probably... Um, was that group of churches behind us what ended in the 1800s or so and um i think we live in the laodicean age where we'll see the coming of the lord uh and uh and he has promised to keep them from the hour of trial which i think is the tribulation period the bottom line 
is that free grace soteriology clarifies the doctrine of perseverance. Um, saints do not persevere to either get saved, stay safe, show they're saved, demonstrate they're saved. They persevere and endure trials, temptations, tribulations on earth that they might enter glory with an abundance, says Peter, of rewards. And hear the Lord say, thy good and faithful servant. Um, the doctrine of perseverance, as presented by the New Hampshire Baptist Confession, confuses the doctrine of perseverance and added a works-oriented component or mix into soteriology. We're going through a really difficult time a few years ago. Litigation, all kinds of stuff. I mean, just just horrible, horrible uh, um, uh, trials and difficulties. And every every uh, every week, uh, I meet with Dr. Anderson, his wife, a couple of others, and we pray for the school. We pray for this conference. We pray for a lot of you guys, and and we just do this every week. And during this time, so really going through this, I just and I said, hey guys, pray for me. Uh, I I don't know if I can take this anymore. Uh, I um, I uh, I mean, uh, lawsuits coming, things happening all the time. Uh, I just uh, you know I just want to quit. I just uh, I, I want to fight back. I I am. Um, uh, I really, really need your help to pray that I just might be able to endure. And Betty Anderson said something that just stuck with me. She looked up and she said, well, Dan, maybe the Lord is training you for some particular job in his coming kingdom. Mm -hmm. And he needs you to endure now <clears throat> so that you'll be able to do what he's got for you in the coming kingdom. I'll tell you what, it changed my whole attitude about endurance. Yes, we got five, ten minutes. Is your lawsuit connected uh, to what we're talking about or anything? Is that a theological thing or what? What happened is um, I um, I had um, my father-in-law pastor at a church and he passed away and a, a, um, a pedophile and a, a pastor who had been arrested by the FBI for... Um, uh, solicitation had moved in and, and taken over with the intent to um, sell the property and and just live off of it, you know. Right. And uh, so I filed a lawsuit against him oh, wow. and uh, and fought for about four years, and it was horrible. Did you win? I won. Good. And chased him out of California. <laughs> and uh, so, but I, I didn't want any part of it. Didn't want right. to do it. But but that's what it was all about. It was just constant oppression and congratulations. Congratulations. Four or five minutes. Any any thoughts, questions, additions, guys? We we struggle. The reason I brought this up is is because we struggle with uh, this this whole since the New Hampshire uh, Baptist Confession just sweeps down. It's gotten into our uh, fellowship it's uh, got over at southwestern and it opens the door for um reform theology to come in and begin to uh, approach and start digging and then and, and, and then they they make a, they make a yeah so thoughts yeah. thank you for your presentation uh, uh don't you think that there is a, a problem of translation or in the case they use the verb to, to be served, saved I mean, could be uh, using another uh, vocable instead of being saved, uh, maybe rescued, or not exactly to. There is a confusion of the meaning of the verb to be saved. To say. So I, I think uh, maybe in other languages you might find uh, clear vocable, non confusing uh, words to use, uh, but otherwise, because it should be clear if we depart from if we we, we 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 refer to the principle of being saved and having eternal life, this should not be uh, this this uh, this should not be interrupted. We know for sure that it's going on, but the confusion might lay in the 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 meaning of the used words. So the word so so. Is there no 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 way of uh, in the new recommending in the new edition of 
using another word instead, instead of let, let me give you an opportunity for people to misuse. To, to, to be, let, to let me give you a good example. The, the word so so is all in the context. You got to go to the context. Here's the context. Peter's jumping out on the boat. He's walking toward the Lord. He sees the sage. He sees the waves and he says, Lord, save me. Yes. It's in the context. He's not saying, he's not saying, Lord, save, uh, you know, come into my life and save me as well. Yeah, he's not <laughs> saying that right there. He just said, keep saving for drunk. So it's the context. So you always look at the context and you can find out the definition of the word by the context. When I took uh, intermediate Greek in Trinity, I uh, was taught by an Arminian. And before we even, of course, he knew my views, before we, when we got to James 5, where it said, the prayer of faith will save the one who's sick. He said, Carrie, you're going to love this because here's sozo being used in non justification sense. So okay. it's always, what do you say from? And of course, James is talking about being saved from a wasted life. Because yeah. mm -hmm. that same word, dead, doesn't mean non existence. It's the right. same word that, that the father used, the <coughs> prodigal son. This is my son who was dead. You know, it's unproductive. Yeah. So it's always, like you said, context, context, context. context, context, context. context. Yeah. Could you speak to um, the parable of the servants of the the talents? That's one I really struggle with in this context. So again, like I said a moment ago, the the uh, the they're receiving the word, and so it's um, so if they're receiving the word, not academically, if they're receiving the word uh, as um, uh, as salvific, they receive the word and they trust then they're saved. No matter what happens in any one of the situations, they're saved. Now, what will happen is that you'll get a lot of different um, commentators that will divide them out. This one will say that these three weren't. These two weren't. These two are. These three weren't. That one was. And and I, um, but with the receiving of the word, I, I could see where all four were saved, even though even the first one uh, even though he received the word, if he received the word, yeah. then he saved. Even though Satan takes the word away from him, he still had received it in his trust in Christ and saved. That's just the way I see it. Amen. I, I, so. Except Luke 1 8 says that he takes well, away the word so that he should not believe and be saved. Right. So he heard it, but he didn't understand. Okay. What it, what it was, and then okay. it left because it says right there in eight twelve. I was thinking that Luke said that he received it. Are we uh, no the the next one the next one he received it with joy. That's okay. the second. That's on the rock. Well, belief is there. The belief is it. Yeah. The belief is the it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think we need to to focus. Endurance is such an important part of the Christian life. A lot of times we we get it's we shouldn't be confused with the Reformed position on that. But man, you know the author of Hebrews says you have need of endurance, and every one of us have need of endurance. We just need to know, you know how to do it as a believer, not in order to keep our salvation or or prove it or anything else, but but because we need to get through it to honor and glorify Christ. And by his grace we get rewarded for doing it. But you know, we need to know the importance of endurance. Right. In the, and Tim, I believe that endurance I think that endurance breeds endurance. I think that I think yeah. I think we have levels of endurance that we don't that we get here we don't think we could. I was going to die before I get here. I thought I was going to die before I mm -hmm. get to this level. But now I'm at this level of endurance, this next level of endurance doesn't seem as as, as, as big of a step. And at, at a time, you get to the point where oh, here, here it comes again. Yeah. Here it comes again. Test of your faith yeah. produces endurance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> coach's, <laughs> coach's analysis uh, yeah. this morning on uh, sports and endurance. And if you're uh, first time you get out there and start running in 40s, you think you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Zane Hodges once told me that the greatest motivation for holy living is unconditional love. <laughs> because without that, you've got nothing. But but when you realize you're you're accepted in Christ unconditionally, you have value, you have love, guess what? You don't need acceptance and love from other people. If you get it, it's a bonus. But now 
I can share and I can give to you. I don't need anything in return because I'm I'm unconditionally accepted by God Almighty. I mean, where else can you go from there? So, foreign <laughs> theology, the word endure. What what does that mean to them? Because it, it seems to be they're different. Uh, I think right now what's what's popular in reform circles is that that if you that uh, if you don't endure. It shows that you never were saved in the yeah, first place. Right. That's what they're saying. They're going back, which which uh, which would put every person that's uh, reform on notice that man, if I, if I, you know, I may not be saved. I mean, they go through their whole life thinking I may not be saved because if I don't endure, then I'm going to fall. You know, Arminianism and Calvinism end up at the same at the place. Same place. Same, same place. same place. same place. Amen. Have you uh, run into uh, anyone that said? Uh, uh, if you're really one of the elect, you're going to believe in the doctrine of predestination and election. Have you run into that yet? I think the reason they can play with the language is that it goes back to it goes back to depravity, which means man isn't man isn't capable of believing. Therefore, is capable of doing anything. It's all of God. Yeah. So it's to, to change perseverance from an active verb into a passive quality that God is working through. Yeah. So, so it, it goes back to a more fundamental issue, and that is, what's the nature of man, the nature of God, and and therefore, you know, how does the the response work? And, and so, I, I think they're blind to these technical discussions because they're they've got a plank in their theology that doesn't allow them to go there. Right, and one of the things is they really don't believe in the free moral agency of man. That's, that's, that's the whole point right there. Right. And, uh, and 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 Wayne uh, uh, tries to explain that with that his stuff of um, pre-salvation regeneration. You know, he's got that in that in that book. And, yes, I audited a course one time at Trinity by John Gershner. Oh, you know, my wow. and he actually said that regeneration comes before faith. Yeah. 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 Well, he gets that from group. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, no, we know he got it from. He used to, he used to offer to buy everybody the complete words of Jonathan Edwards if you would agree yeah. to read it within a year. Would, I think Grudem got it from him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and let's pray. I think we're out of time. I think people looking at the door like you guys are going to hurry up and get done. So. Lord, thank you for just helping us to clarify, uh, not so that we can be boastful and argue and know things, but so that when we have uh, friends that we care about that have been sucked into some of this uh, reformed uh, thoughts on uh, perseverance, that we might be able uh, to ask them questions that would take them back to the context and let them come to the conclusion that, um, uh, that the doctrine of perseverance and endurance uh, has to do with sanctification, and and when they realize that, that uh, they can settle them in their faith, uh, settle them in their belief, and and they won't have that anxiety and um, uh, and and the the thought that they may indeed may not be saved, as so many of them do. So Lord, help us. Thank you for this conference. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your son. I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. 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 Thank you.